Welcome. I'm so glad you had time today. Make time for your yoga practice. Join me in yin. Today's practice will be focusing on mostly on our hips and spine like we do a lot in our yin classes. So if you haven't already, take a moment or two to gather up some props that you might have around the house. So as we mentioned before, since we're practicing at home right now, if you don't have blocks or yoga blankets or bolsters, you can use a couple of solid books. They might come in handy, especially today. Uh, grab those old encyclopedias you might have hit, uh, hidden around the house somewhere. A couple of firm pillows or even a um, cushion off of a chair or sofa if you have a small one. And then a couple of even beach towels or small throws, little blankets, whatever you have. So anything you like to use to make these poses a little more accessible to you. So as always, doing what works for you and just going from there. So we'll begin our practice today. Our first pose today is child's pose. So making your way onto all fours and taking your knees as wide as you would like them, toes together. And as always, providing support either behind your knees, on top of your calves, if it's uncomfortable for you in child's pose, anything behind your ankles, blankets under your ankles or under your knees. You know what supports um, your body needs, so uh, take a moment to do that. We'll begin shifting your hips back to your ankles, walking your arms long as we lower our chest to the ground, forehead to the ground, or your pillows or bolsters, and settling in here. Finding your breath, a nice, even inhale, pausing at the top of your breath, and a nice, even exhale. As you settle in, we work on just quieting the mind while we're here. Finding your breath, the rhythm of your breath, and just feeling your body soften and release, becoming still, eventually just quieting our mind. We'll be here for two or three minutes.
take two more breaths here. Nice, even inhales. And exhale. One more time. And slowly begin to walk yourself back up, lifting your hips, coming into all fours, stacking your wrists under your shoulders, knees under your hips. Let's take a few rounds of cat cows. So starting out with little baby cows and baby cats. Just working through some range of motion in your spine here, taking it nice and slow. Eventually creating some deeper movements. And then coming to stillness, neutral tabletop. From here, we're heading to our uh, a lunge, also known as dragon flying high. So have your towel or blanket nearby for padding for your knee. Also, your books or blocks may come in handy. So from here, drawing that right foot forward up between your hands, and we'll be scooting that left knee back. So curling the toes under on that left foot, scoot your knee back, scoot back an inch or two, and then lower your knee again. So you're actually forward of your kneecap. You're not directly on your kneecap. You're also getting a nice stretch up the, this deep psoas stretch here on the left side. So having your encyclopedias or good strong books or yoga blocks, if you're so lucky to have them at home, bringing those up alongside here. Now, if you don't have blocks, you don't want to use them, that's fine. You can just place both hands on this front knee. So just a couple of different options. But when you're here and we're finding our position, finding what works for you here. So be sure to drop your shoulder blades down your back. Lift your chest. Imagine somebody's holding a string right here between your collarbone and lifting your chest nice and tall. Your head is neutral, your neck is neutral, but your chest is lifted. Shoulder blades are down your back. And then you have a subtle little shifting, scissoring of your hips. You're gently drawing that right hip back and your left hip forward. It's very subtle. And then just sinking into these hips, trying as much as possible to relax into this pose. So the tendency is to squeeze really tight up here in this quad. So try not to hold on too tightly there. And just finding your breath. So remembering that yin is all about finding the perfect stretch for you in this moment. Using props, using your intuition to know what's working for you. And then the biggest key is having the patience to hang out here for kind of a long time, right? So patience and breath. One more minute to go here. So tuning into your long inhales and long exhales.
will slowly begin to move out of this pose. So ever so gently push through that front foot. Begin shifting your weight back ever so slightly, lengthening out that front leg, just stretching the front leg and our And then bringing that right foot back to meet the left. Back to all fours and just take some nice big hip circles moving in one direction. And then the other direction. Eventually coming to stillness, and then we'll set up to do the other side. So maybe adjusting your towel if you need to. And if you really struggle with putting weight on your knee, you can always use a bolster, or if you have two pillows that we talked about earlier, you can support by putting your shin on that bolster so that your kneecap is actually hanging off of the bolster. So no weight is being put directly on your knee. So you can still get the benefits and the stretch, the psoas stretch of this pose without um, causing a lot of pain on your knee. So I'm going to use my towel today on this side, bringing that left foot forward between your hands and setting up on this side. So once again, curling the toes under on that right leg, lifting that leg long, scooting it back an inch or two, and then setting the knee back down. Letting the top of that back foot rest on the mat. Finding your version of dragon flying high on the left side. Once again, send your shoulder blades down your back. Finding your breath. Equal inhales and exhales. Remembering to lift your chest. Relaxing your shoulders and relaxing your jaw. through this. Just a few more breaths. Staying here as long as you possibly can. And when you think you can't last any longer, try one more breath. Ever so slowly begin shifting back out of this pose, taking those half splits, stretching that front leg, drawing the left knee back to meet the right, 
and taking those big hip circles once again. Heading in one direction, nice and slow. And then the other direction. Pausing, maybe even just coming all the way forward into a modified up dog here, just stretching those hip flexors right here. And then releasing and making your way on to your bottom seated. So got the hard stuff out of the way. It's all downhill after this. So from here, again, I'm sitting up on my towel, your blanket, whatever you have, just elevating my hips again, taking your legs long. We're gonna head to a forward fold. So keeping a little bend in your knees, if your hamstrings are, are tight, you can start with nice bent knees. Um, elevating up on a blanket or bolster just helps send our whole pelvis forward as we begin to forward fold. So when you're ready, inhaling your arms, creating as much length in your spine, and then on the exhale, begin to hinge forward from the pelvis. You meet that resistance, and then relax your arms, let them land on either side of your legs. Let your the weight of your head round your upper back, so the head is aiming toward your knees as you slowly begin to relax into this forward fold, knowing that you can support your head, if you like, with any of your pillows or blankets that you have nearby. So just sinking into this forward fold, allowing the legs to relax, not trying to make this pose look any certain way. Just allow it to happen. Allow your muscles to relax. Once they relax, they allow a little access deeper to that fascia tissue that we're working towards. Allow your shoulder blades to roll down your back, even though we're folded forward. And find your breath. Each exhale, feel your body softening into this pose. Melting into your mat.
Just a couple more breaths here. Placing your palms on the mat ever so slowly. Begin to walk yourself back up. So unroll your spine nice and slow. Let your head be the very last thing to come up. Straightening the spine, finding our staff pose. Just noticing, bringing your awareness to any sensations you feel in this moment of stillness here. And leaning back on your hands, bring your feet to the mat nice and wide. Knees are bent. And then we'll just take a little twist to the right. So bent knees, feet as wide as the mat, left hand in front, right hand behind. Nice little twist here. Just releasing our low back after that deep forward fold. Slowly unwinding and heading in the other direction, twisting left. And slowly unwinding back to center. Scooting props out of the way. We'll be making our way down onto our backs now. So rolling down onto your back, maybe having a block or blanket nearby handy just in case you want to use it. We'll be heading to our reclining pigeon here. So we're going to take that right, uh, bring both feet to the mat, bend your knees, bring both feet to the mat, cross right ankle over left knee. This is where I like to take a block or a pillow, blanket, something, and put it behind my head. It just gives a little length to my arms, so my arms don't have to work so hard in this reclining pigeon. So from here, you're drawing that left knee to your chest. You're taking your arms. You're drawing them through that figure four. So maybe grabbing onto the back of that left thigh, maybe the front of that left shin, depending where your hips are today. So keeping this left foot uh, relaxed, your right foot has a gentle flex in it to protect this right knee. And finding our reclining pigeon, reclining figure four stretch here. So once again, just becoming aware of your breath and allowing that lower body to relax. Gently drawing that knee towards your chest till you begin to feel that sensation. Maybe it's in the outer hip, maybe it's the inner thigh, kind of depending where your areas are today. Just some sensation. If you're feeling it, then you're doing it, right? So just find your first edge and hang out here. breath here. 
we're going to transition to a figure four twist. So just keeping your legs where they are, lower that left foot to the mat. So you still have this figure four shape here. Right ankle is still over your left knee. You're just going to allow, you're going to move to the left. You're going to allow that right foot, sole of that right foot to fall over all the way to the left. Note I still have the figure four taking my left hand and just holding on to that right ankle. I'm going to remove my pillow here. So right foot is flat on the ground. Your left knee is kind of parked behind that right foot, kind of keeping it in place. Your right knee is pointing toward the sky. Relaxing your low body. And then from here, we're going to transition right into our eagle legs or our twisted roots twist, right? So just allowing that right leg to crawl underneath the left. So now both knees are towards the left side. Your arms can be out to a T. Scoot your hips back a little bit if you need a little more space. Working your knees toward the left side, this right arm here can float over, and your gaze can be towards that right shoulder. This is a pretty deep spinal twist here. Also still working the hips, so if this is not comfortable to you, you can unwind your legs and just stack your knees for your twist that way. Finding your even inhales and exhales. Finding areas that you're still squeezing or tensing. And use your exhale. Soften those spots. Take two more breaths here. And we'll slowly begin to work our way back to our mat, uncrossing your legs, Rolling all the way back onto your back. Lift your hips 
enough to center your spine down the center of your mat here. Then take that right leg, inhale that right foot all the way to the sky, grabbing on to the back of your thigh, stretching that leg long, and then circle that right ankle one direction, and then the other direction. Left foot, left knee is bent, left foot is still on the mat. And then go ahead and lengthen that left leg. Take that left leg long now as you draw that right knee closer to your chest. Still extending, getting a nice stretch here. Still rolling your ankle one direction and the other. Releasing that right leg long to meet the left and take a nice long body stretch here. And then we'll prepare to do that on the other side. So finding our reclining pigeon on the left, right knee is bent, right foot is to the mat, cross that left ankle over your right knee. Maybe a pillow for your head again if you like. Draw that right knee towards your chest, clasping behind your right thigh. Once again, let that right foot relax and have a nice gentle flex in this left foot here, protecting our left knee. So drawing that right knee in as we gently push that left knee away. So I'm just using my left elbow and pressing on my thigh ever so slightly to keep that figure four shape and keep my knee from folding in towards me. So I'm trying to push my knee away as I pull the other side in. Finding your version of pigeon here on the left. And it's okay if one side is tighter than the other. Very rarely are we the exact same on both sides. We usually have one side that I call friendlier and the other side maybe not quite as friendly. But that's okay, that's normal. Just accept where you are today. Work with what we've got. Don't worry about tomorrow. Forget to breathe. Finding those nice even inhales and exhales. Just tuning into your breath as we still keep our mind quiet. to relax our shoulders even though we're working a little bit here it's hard to completely relax them but doing our best to create a little space there between our ears and our shoulders and then from here we'll transition to that figure four twist so releasing that right foot to the mat Still keeping your figure four shape. Let your left foot fall forward to the ground. Maybe clasping with your right hand, 
holding that foot up. Left knee is working its way toward the sky. Your gaze can be up or you can look in the opposite direction. And transitioning here right into our twisted roots. Just draw, let that left leg come down, wrap around the right. Maybe scoot your hips back a little bit, let your knees fall forward. And allow that, working that left shoulder blade to the ground or letting this left arm float. You can take cactus arms if that feels good here. Again, notice any of those places that you are tensing, even though you might not be aware. Take that little body scan. Notice if you're squeezing or holding on somewhere, maybe in this top outer hip right here, maybe your thigh, maybe you're tensing and clenching here. Just allow them to soften and release, just melting towards the mat. And then we'll begin to move out of this pose so you can uncross your legs first. Inhale back to center. Feet are on the floor, knees are bent. Lift your hips 
Find the center of your mat. Center your spine and your tailbone. And then once again, inhale that left foot to the sky. Keep your right leg bent. Left foot is toward the sky here, pointing and flexing your ankle, clasping the back of that left thigh. Rotating your ankle one direction and then the other. And then lengthening that right leg. Take that right leg long to the mat. Press that right heel, back of that right heel into the mat on the inhale. As you exhale, draw that left knee a little closer to your chest or just push through that heel, extending that left heel to the sky. So straightening that left knee. And then slowly releasing, left leg long to meet the right. Nice long body stretch here again, pointing and flexing your toes. And then from here, we'll transition to our last pose before Shavasana. So just bringing the soles of your feet together, a reclining butterfly. So soles of your feet together, allowing your knees to open out. So you don't have to have your heels close into your groin unless that's comfortable to you. You can take them further out, uh, creating that nice diamond shape here. So finding, Finding your Goldilocks, right? Not too much, not too little, but just right. Again, providing support underneath your thighs if that feels good to you. So either your block or your pillows, your blankets, whatever you have. Um, I like to stick them up closer under my thighs versus my knee. But do what works for you here. Coming into your comfortable reclining butterfly and maybe placing one hand on your belly the other hand on your heart as we begin to tune into our breath on the inhales feel your belly expand with air the exhales, feel your belly button sink to your spine. Allow your low body to relax. Just trying to match your inhales and your exhales. So maybe you begin inhaling for a count of three. Pausing at the top. And exhaling for three. Pausing at the bottom. Maybe next time you do a count of four. Pause and exhale for four. So continuing to lengthen your inhales and your exhales, finding your rhythm, quieting your mind, allowing your body to melt into the mat.
from here we'll begin to transition to our Shavasana. So drawing your legs up, use your hands, support them. And either covering up, lengthening out, putting a little support behind your knees, whatever your Shavasana is today, make your way there. Once again, nice deep inhale as you settle in. Audible exhale. Just notice how your body feels now compared to when we began class. Feel the rhythm of your breath as you inhale and exhale. And on your exhales, releasing any little remaining bits of tension or stress allowing them to just melt into the mat. Completely releasing and deeply letting go. Bringing a little gentle movement to your fingers and your toes, your wrists and your ankles. Slowly awakening your body, maybe taking that long body stretch. Before rolling over to one side. Taking your time, using your hands for support, and making your way back up to seated. Join me in any comfortable seated position. We'll take one final nice deep inhale together and let it go. Remembering this feeling and know that it's available to you anytime on your mat. And we take one final inhale together, lifting our hands above our head. Exhale, joining our palms, coming to heart center. With so much love and gratitude, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for taking time to take care of yourself, your body, your mind, your spirit. From my heart to yours, namaste. Thank you all. Bye. See you next time.